Hi there, my name is Nils from DIYNils.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to put shiplap on your walls on the cheap. So the shiplap we're using in this project is actually made out of 1 8 inch plywood cut into 8 inch strips. In most places you can pick this up at the hardware store in 8 inch sheets that are 4 feet by 8 feet and then take it to the saw and ask them to cut it into 8 inch strips for you. If your store does not allow you to do that, then you can get it cut into larger pieces, like I actually cut these into 16 inch pieces at the store, and then brought them home and on the table saw, ripped them down to eight inch pieces. But always check to see if you can get it done at the store first. To prepare the boards, run some low grit sandpaper, like 80 or 120 grit sandpaper, over the edges of each of them to make sure they're splinter free and ready to go. Before we can start on the project, we need to remove everything that we can from the walls that we're going to address. Make sure to remove light switch covers, outlet covers, mirrors, artwork. If you do have to remove light fixtures, be sure to power the electricity off at the circuit breaker box before continuing. Now that we've got the place cleared, we're going to use a stud finder to mark where the studs are along the wall because it's best practice to go ahead and drive the nails into, or the brads in this case, into the studs to make sure the shiplap planks are on there nice and tight. Once you've marked each stud, use a level to draw a vertical line to indicate where you need to nail into for each board. To get a sharp and uniform look for your shiplap, you need even spacing throughout. To do this, you can tape two coins together. In my case, two quarters or one nickel and one penny. Now it's time to start putting the boards up. If you have a section of wall that's greater than eight feet or the length of each board, then you can put full sheets up and then you'll just have to cut a smaller piece to reach the end. To fasten the boards onto the wall, use one and a half inch or two inch brads, placing two to three of them on each stud. It doesn't matter too much if you start from the top or from the bottom, but if you're treating adjacent walls, make sure that you start on either the top or the bottom on both walls. Anytime you're working around a wall that has windows, doors, or any sort of casing on it, you're gonna need to cut out some custom pieces like this one you see here. To do this, get your measurements and trace them onto the wood and then use a jigsaw to cut it out. If you don't have a jigsaw, you can also use a coping saw which is less expensive. A basic jigsaw though, cost about $25 to start and in my opinion, is well worth it. With your first board in place, you're ready to put your second board up. This is where the spacers come in. Make sure to place your spacers at least about a foot apart, more if you can, and then drive two or three brads into each stud. Remember to check your spacing as you go so that you get a nice, consistent, sharp look and everything will look the same from top to bottom. Continue down your wall, getting your measurements for each piece individually, making your cuts on the saw, and then placing the board on the wall with a few brads. From here, it's mostly just wash, rinse, repeat, but things do start to pick up pretty quickly and you start to see some real progress. Now if you find yourself in a situation where you have to place a board that completely covers up an outlet for example or a light switch like I've got here, you can use a larger diameter drill bit like a half inch or five eighths or three quarters just to make a hole big enough for the jigsaw blade to fit into and then you can use the saw to cut out the opening. If you find yourself having to leave a thinner piece like what you see on the left of the board here, just make sure to take it slow so you don't break that piece off. Now that we've got all of the planks in place, we've got them all tacked up and ready to go, I'm just going to hit everything once again with a little bit of sandpaper to make sure all of my edges and corners and everything are smooth. I've already tapped down the nails to make sure there are none sticking out from the surface. And at this point, we're going to go ahead and use some putty to putty over everything. Where I've got joints over in my corner there, I'm going to putty those over to make it look like it's one solid piece from one side all the way across. And then after that, we'll be ready to paint. If you prefer, you can of course go with a little bit more of a handmade look like what we've done here in our basement. We use spacers between each of the boards horizontally just to leave the gaps there and we didn't use putty over any of the holes. Of course, it's up to you which version you prefer. After doing the upstairs version where we puttied over everything, we think we kind of prefer that look. As a final step before painting, I highly recommend caulking all of the edges, cracks, or joints that you have in your wall. It really gives a nice polished look. Here in the bathroom where we had connected walls, we were careful to make sure that the planks lined up with one another so that the gap between them continued on from one wall to the next. Finally, the fun part, paint. 
For paint here, we used two coats of a semi-gloss interior paint, and just for kicks, I decided to try to cut in by hand rather than using tape. It all came out actually surprisingly well, and we were able to get the whole thing painted pretty quickly. One of the trickiest parts about painting shiplap is getting the spaces between the boards. Make sure to load plenty of paint on the brush and get those gaps covered thoroughly. Now this is a decent sized project and depending on the complexity of the walls you're trying to cover it may take anywhere from several hours to a day or more, but as you can see the results are well worth it. that's it, we're all set. The shiplap adds a great dimension to any wall that was otherwise pretty plain and looks great anywhere in the house. If you've got any questions, tips, or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. You can find links to all the tools and supplies used in this video in the description. And you can also head over to my website, DIYNills.com, to learn a little bit more there. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Nailed it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you're not already subscribing to my channel, I would love for you to do so. Give me a thumbs up in the video if you liked it, and by subscribing, whenever I come out with a new video, it goes straight to your inbox. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.